Anybody ever watch that show, Friends? You're kind of old. It aired originally in 1994, September 1994. It went off the air May 2004. That's a long time ago. I don't think any of my kids were born then, 2004. But how many of you loved that show, like when you watched it? Some older crowd, right? Probably like over 30 something. Huh? Yeah? Did you ever wish that you had friends like that? Like you would come home and like, man, there's your group and same consistent friends and someone to lean in on and knew your problems, knew your stories, encourage you, yeah? I think that's what was so popular about the show was that it was something that we envied. It was something that we wanted. We wanted friends like that, friends that we could come home to and just share life with. I recently got an email, and here was the question. I don't really know what to do anymore. I used to have a lot of friends in high school, a massive group of girl and guy friends. It was great. I was out every weekend and always doing stuff. Then one day, it just changed. I started to get picked on, laughed at, and left out. Fast forward three years, and I don't have any friends. I've tried so hard, but people just don't like me or don't include me. I've tried traveling on my own, joining sports teams, joining uni clubs and groups, and even going to camps. I meet a lot of people, but no one wants to stick around. People don't like me. My parents have always brushed it off as it's a phase or they're jealous, but I'm tired of crying and feeling alone and always wondering what's wrong with me. Why can't I make friends? I'm nice. I've always gone out of my way for people. I don't understand what I'm doing wrong. I don't want to feel so alone anymore. I hate it. Please help me. As a real letter. We're talking about, we're in a series called Hashtag Struggling. And today's topic is, I don't make friends very easy. It's a struggle. It's hard for me to make friends. I have no friends. I have no real close, but I have a lot of acquaintances. I know a lot of people. But in a time of need, in an emergency, I could scroll through my phone and not find one single person that I would hit the button to say, hey, can we talk? I've heard it over the years, especially men, 80% of men say that they don't have someone that they would consider to be their best friend. A best friend, a best bud, someone who they could call and lean in on in a moment of crisis. Uh, another guy that they feel vulnerable enough that they could open up to without that guy going and telling his business to somebody else. And I'll tell you what's making it even harder is that friendship today is changing. The, 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 the definition of friendship is changing. I wanna put this up on the screen today. The term friend has been evolving for years. Friend. My, my kids come home and my son, he's eight years old, he's like, oh yeah, my friend on the bus. I'm like, oh, he's your friend? He's like, yeah, he's my friend. I'm like, how come you never invited him over to my house? How, over to the house? Oh, because he's a bus friend. <laughs> I don't want him at the house but he's my friend on the bus, right? Like this term friend is evolving. It's been happening for a while. For example, a friend used to be someone that you did life with. We're together doing life. You're coming over my house, I'm coming over your house. We're having barbecues, we're raising our kids together. We go on vacation. Now a friend could be someone that you've never met. You follow them on Facebook, and they follow you on Facebook. We are friends from a distance, and so we use the term friend, but the word friend is evolving. For example, the average American Facebook user 
has 338 friends. So if you just say, I don't have any friends, well, you have 338 Facebook friends. But the average American, when interviewed, said they have less than two close friends. Someone that they can depend on and rely on in a important moment of their life. Which is actually down from six two decades ago. Two decades ago, the average American said that they had six close friends. And 25% of Americans say they have zero close friends. So there's a real tension in society today. There's a real tension. There was a real tension during 2020. There was a real tension of loneliness in 2020 because the term friend is evolving. The second thing I wanna look at is that we've become addicted to immediate affirmation, okay? We're talking about friends, we're talking about having community, but we're addicted to immediate affirmation. I need to be affirmed now. In other words, if I'm feeling a bit lonely, if I'm feeling a bit distanced from people, if I'm feeling a little bit down about myself, I'll take a quick selfie. I'm going to put a little filter on it. Hold on a second. I'm going to do a portrait mode from this side. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, a little blurry. All right, now let me upload that to my Instagram right now. Seriously, you're going to be on my Instagram. Hold on. I got like 12 pages stuff I have to flip through. Instagram, I'm feeling a little lonely right now. I need a little bit of affirmation like that, you know, my jean jacket's kind of cool today. I, I even like straight, straight ironed my beard this morning for everybody. <laughs> Boom, that's on my Instagram. Mike McKelvey NY. Mike McKelvey NY, follow me on Instagram. You're on there right now. Now I'm better! <laughs> I swear to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for me, I better have at least 10 hearts. There it goes. I got, oh shoot, 14, 15. D gets fit 97 commented, double hearts. Elizabeth Doles, blessed. Where are you at? She online, whatever. Immediate, immediate gratification. Immediate affirmation. I'm feeling lonely. I need somebody to comment on my photo now. And, 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 and again, like hearts are cool, but if you actually make a comment, if you act, 25. If you, <laughs> if you make a comment that's like something meaningful, for example, like as a pastor, someone comes up to me, oh man, that was the best message I ever heard in my life. Okay, that doesn't really mean a whole lot to me as a pastor. Like, I'm just saying, like, honestly. But when I say, oh, what part spoke to you? And you actually took notes, and you actually can tell me the part of the sermon that touched your heart, boom. That, that, that's like, that meant something to me. Like, oh, when you said X, Y, Z, that, because we want immediate affirmation. So makes a comment like, oh, Pastor Mike, you look so good today in that jean jacket and your beard all straight. And I put a lot of work into that, right? It, it means something, I'm just joking, like, I like your new kicks, flashy. It means something when you know you went out of your way to do something to be noticed and somebody noticed it. Immediate feedback. In fact, scientists tell us that there's a release of the chemical in our brain called dopamine, and we've become addicted to that. That when we get the comment, when we get the reaction that we were looking for, it releases dopamine, and we've become addicted to that. Who liked it? How many liked it? 
Did they follow me? I may not even follow them back. Oh, that person's never liked one of my photos and they liked it today. I'm not gonna like theirs anymore because they didn't like mine. We're addicted to immediate feedback. And what this is doing is this. It's meeting a short-term need, but we are deferring a long-term and deeper need. It met a need right now, but in an hour from now, I'm gonna be lonely again. So I've deferred my loneliness for about an hour. I've deferred the pain. I have, it's still there, but it was momentary gratification. We're compounding interest on our loneliness. Woo, you quote that. In fact, sociologists now have phrased what they've called it deferred loneliness. Deferred loneliness, a need for instant gratification, but it's deferred loneliness. We feel lonely, so we post something, we say something, we get immediate feedback, it meets a short-term need, but what we're really looking for, and, and this is not a sexual term, we're looking for intimacy. We're looking for someone to have more than a shallow conversation. Do you care about my dreams? Do you care about my pain? Do you care about what I want to do? Do you care that I'm hungry right now? Well, then go make me something, right? I mean, like, th th these are like deeper conversations than just, oh, is it gonna rain today? Oh, I don't know, 30% chance of rain. Uh, do you want to know me? Do you wanna know what has happened to me throughout my life? Do you wanna know where I'm at in this season of life? We are living for likes, but we're longing for love. We're settling for likes, we're settling for heart emojis, but what I really want to know is, if you knew the worst about me, would you still love me? Oh man, I know. We're hooked on this instant gratification, it's changing the way we do relationships. It's changing the way we do relationships. Because, let's talk about this for a second. We can get more likes and more affirmed by people we've never met on social media than the person that we decided to marry at home. I'd take my coat off for that one. It's a little sweaty. We're living for likes, but we're longing for love. It's changing the way that we're doing relationships. Number three, and perhaps the most important about friendships, is that we now have the power to do friendships on our own terms. We have the power to do friendships on, in other words, if Pastor Josh texts me, I can respond to it or not. In fact, me, I've even turned off read on my text messages. So you can know that it was delivered to my inbox, but you don't know if I read it or not. So now I have the power. I've got the power to respond to you or not respond to you. If Pastor Ryan posts a picture on Instagram, I have the power to determine whether it's double tap worthy or not. And isn't it so funny, man? Like, depending on the mood that we're in that day, like, sometimes we'll go through Instagram, like, pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up, pop up. We don't even know what the picture was, but because it was our friend, we just give it a double tap, give him the affirmation. But then there's days that you're like, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> Same friend, but today they don't deserve a double tap. <laughs> I'm so sick of them posting dumb food pictures. If this person posts another picture of food, I'm gonna stop following them. Ooh, right? I'm gonna unfollow them. I'm so tired of seeing their pictures. I'm gonna unfollow, I'm gonna unfriend them. Ooh. But we are in control. I'm in control of this friendship. I will like it 
or not like it. I will respond to you or not respond to you. I manage our friendship from a distance, yet I want intimacy. I'm gonna manage, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna turn read receipt off, I'm gonna leave it unread, I'm gonna leave it in the, in the main box, but I want you to call me and invite me over to your house for dinner. Like we're jacked up in our heads lately, guys. <laughs> we don't know how to do friendships anymore, right? It was so strange yesterday, walking around community day, because a lot of people that were at community day, I've only ever seen you from the nose up. And so I'm like, oh, that's the, what the rest of your face looks like. Like, it, it was kind of strange, like, because friendships have been from a distance for over a year. If you post too many pictures of your product or too many duck faces, I'm gonna unfollow you because I'm in control of our friendship. So we know that social media, we know that technology is changing friendships. Many, many for the better because you can invite a lot more people to your party now because you can put out on social media. You don't have to wait to fill out cards and send them out and mail them. Like, it's instant. But there's some ways that it has been for the worse. I can get followers on Facebook, but I have no real friends. Hashtag struggling. I'm struggling with that. I'm struggling with making actual friends. I can make followers, but I can't make friends. But why do I need friends anyway? Right, so then we go that far. I don't need any friends. Oh, the needs my house and my car and my puppy dog. I want to tell you guys this today. God designed us for community. God designed us for community. I, I, we got to get that. Remember, God designed us for community. He designed us to have a need for one another. And I know that maybe you might be seriously introverted and you could say to yourself, well, I, I love being alone and I could be alone for the rest of my life. And I get that, but that's not true. I can get alone and read a book for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, but then I'm gonna get up and like, I want to talk to somebody eventually. <laughs> so let's make this a sermon, okay? After God made Adam, God said something very, very important. God said in Genesis 2.18, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. I will make a match for him. It is not good that man be alone. I'll make a companion, someone that he can do life with. Now, I'm sure that Adam was okay at first, like, man, that's a cow, and that's a horse, and that's a lion, and he was having fun doing his job, and he was about his father's business. But then when all the animals were asleep at night and he went underneath the tree to sleep, he's just kind of like, well, there's two lions and there's two zebra and there's two giraffe and there's one me. And God, I, you're more than enough because you love me and you created me, but there's two of everything but me. Mm. God knew that humanity needs companionship. All I need is Jesus, Pastor Mike. That's not what God the Father said. So unless you're wiser than the creator, you need somebody in your life. You need friendship. God said it is not good that you be alone. Psalm 25, 14 says this, friendship with the Lord is reserved for those who honor him. With them, he shares the secrets of his covenant. Even God wants you as a friend. It's calling out to you. Would you honor me? Would you love me? Would you choose me? 
be my friend. And when you become my friend, I will share the secrets of my covenant with you. Number two, be a loving and trustworthy and upbeat person yourself. Like seriously, nobody wants to hang out with the most neurotic person in the world. No one wants to hang out with the person who's begging them for money every time they hang out. No one wants to hang out with the person who's talking about their ex-husband the whole time. Like, dude, I get it, but that's why you divorced them. Like, get over it. Like, can we move on? Can we, like, go shopping or something? Can we have fun? Can we go swimming? Like, the upbeat, happy, cheerful person is the one who attracts upbeat, happy, cheerful people. To have a friend, you should make sure that you're the type of person who would be a good friend. How come nobody wants to hang out with me? I mean, I just, you know, I just post the most darkest posts all the time. All right, can, I, can we just get, like, for real for, like, two and a half seconds? Like, seriously, like, most people aren't going to want to be your friend if all you ever talk about is politics. It's like, it's not emotionally life-giving. It's like, dude, again, like we're gonna just scream at each other. Like we, we actually even agree about the same thing, but we're gonna scream at each other because we're ha unhappy with the way things are. Like, dude, like let's laugh. Let's laugh. Let's think of something else to talk about, all right? Come on, I'm just, I'm just listen, I'm just throwing some stuff out. You want friend? Then be a friend, like be fun. As you read through the Bible, we need to look for verses that speak about how we should treat each other. For example, Matthew 7, 1, warns against being judgmental. It's so funny, man, right? I, yeah, listen, we're just talking about being friends, right? It's so funny, like, nobody in here wants to be judged. But it's so easy for us to be judgmental about somebody who sins differently than we do. You got a poor self-image and you don't like yourself, but you're gonna judge somebody else who sins, I'm not even gonna give any examples. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even gonna go there today. It's so easy to be judgmental about someone who's doing something that you already have the victory over. And, and the Bible explicitly tells you, hey listen, take the telephone pole out of your eye, but that you might help take the speck out of your brother's eye. The, the point to the scripture is, okay, you have gone through that and you have the victory, so use your knowledge of how you got the victory over that to help someone else struggling with the same thing that you've gone through. Romans 14, 13 says this, therefore let us stop passing judgment on one another. Instead, make up your own mind to put any stumbling block or obstacle out of the way of your brother or sister. Don't be a stumbling block, man. Get it out of their way. Make up your mind to not put a stumbling block, to not be judgmental in front of somebody else. Romans 15, 14, I myself am convinced, my brother and sister, that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with knowledge, and contentment, um, competent to instruct one another. Are you instructing one another? Are you taking the knowledge that you received about the goodness of God and giving it to other people that they may grow in their knowledge of him? Galatians 6, 2, ready? Here we go. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. Amen. It doesn't say, hear someone's burden and go repeat it. E Baba. Hey. Did you hear about what they did on Easter? Yeah, we crushed it. Why are you talking about it? Like, 
We have over a million TikTok views on Easter. We have over 20,000 YouTube views from Easter. We had 10 churches call us and ask us for the script about Easter. Like, again, like, how, how, could, how could anybody make a negative comment about 20 lives that were transformed from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light? There was 20 salvations on Easter Sunday. All I'm saying, guys, man, you want to be, have friends? Then be nice. Be nice. And mommy and daddy, you ever tell you that? Be nice. Here's another point. Want friends? Get involved in group activities. Get involved with what your community's doing. How can you give back to your community? How can you be involved in what's happening around you? In order to make acquaintances that can that can grow into friendships, join groups. Join a connect group at church, right? If you're, ne- hey, listen, if all you have to do is go to work, home, work, home, work, home, and you don't do anything extra, where do you have opportunity to make new friendships? So I get insecure, I get uh, introvert, I get all that, I'm actually an introvert. I'm just a very assertive introvert, right? I'm, I'm introverted. Like, Yesterday was exhausting to me because I had to like be on. Like I was past the mic all day yesterday, right? So eventually I got to go like sit under the shade by myself for a few minutes and just kind of get alone. But I understand that about myself. But I've wanted to make friends and I've wanted to make church friends and I've wanted to like meet other pastors. So I would go to conferences and intentionally get there early so I could get up towards the front so I could meet other people. And it was exhausting to me and it was uncomfortable to me but I wanted to do that. I wanted to be able to meet other people. I wanted to meet people like Pastor Ryan who could come and lead worship so awesome today for us and and bring life to us, right? (laughs) Joining a connect group, attending a church event, joining a ministry team, serving in the local church are all great ways to put yourself in a position to make friends. Now, I am gonna throw out an alert to you. Just because someone's a Christian doesn't mean they will make a trustworthy friend. There's some people who just got saved yesterday or they act like they got saved yesterday, don't mean you can trust them. Just because they got the fish t-shirt on, don't mean they're gonna care for your soul. Let's be for real. Let's be for real, right? But by putting yourself out there, initiating conversations, sharing interests, you put yourself in a place to make friends. So reach out to others. Reach out to others. If you're walking through a hallway or you're waiting for your kids down in fam kids and you see another couple that's kind of, you know, in the same stage of your life, man, like meeting other couples who are fun is hard nowadays, right? Like the dudes get along, but then the wives have nothing in common. Or the wives get along and the dudes are like, yo, that dude sucks. (laughs) Come on, let's be for real. Like it happens all the time, right? In our industrial age culture, it actually has created more loneliness than perhaps any other generation of time. We have more access to more people, but we haven't learned how to have face-to-face conversations. We're more awkward, we're more socially awkward today than we've ever been in the history of the world. Yet, you can get each other 24 hours a day. So let me give you some tips. Choose people, choose people who genuinely enjoy being around you. I don't want to be merely tolerated. I want to be celebrated in our relationship. Come on. Love yourself enough to know that if you have friends that just merely tolerate you, find a new room. Find a new room of people. I'm gonna throw this out there to you, man. Like, I've tried to be in the room of, listen, every 
preacher that's on TV, I've been in a room with them. It was like my mission for four years. I traveled the globe, like I wanna be in this person's room and I wanna see this person, I wanna meet this person. And every time I went into those rooms and like they were great and like awesome, like really big name guys and all kinds of stuff, I'm like, not my people, not my people, not my people, not my people, not my people. And be okay that not all people are gonna be your people. You have to find the people who celebrate you just the way you are. But what I would encourage you is this. Find the healthy version of you. Find the healthy version of you. I love you just the way you are. But you got some junk that you need to work on. Right? You don't have to be negative all day long. You've allowed yourself to be negative. You've allowed yourself to be down. I want the happy you. I want the healthy you. And then those friends are the ones that are going to, you know, pull your card when you're acting like an idiot. Right? Don't limit yourself. Don't limit yourself to just family or people that you've always known. Paul said, to the Jews, I became a Jew. To the Gentile, I became a Gentile. To these, I became these. To the Roman, I became a Roman. So that I might reach them. We're gonna talk about that next week. Another way to conquer loneliness is seeking to serve other people. Joining a place that you can serve, serving at a soup kitchen, serving in a community group, cleaning up the highway, giving back through an act of service, a homeless shelter. Come on. Visiting an elderly home, visiting an elderly neighbor, mowing someone's yard because they haven't been able to do their grass, helping someone out. I want you to get this today in the last three minutes. God doesn't want you lonely. God doesn't want you lonely. The reason you're lonely is because he put in you the desire to have friends. He put in you the desire to have community, to have relationships, to have other people that you can do life with, that you can laugh with. So take the initiative to reach out and meet other people. Here's the greatest thing I love and like, if God wanted us lonely, then when we actually get to heaven, would be on like, have a house on a hill, totally away from everybody and never communicate with anybody else. But the Bible talks about that there's gonna be all these people and we're worshiping in one accord, saying worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God who was and is and is to come. And we're gonna be singing praises and songs together in community. Yeah. Eternity, we will be with others yeah. in community. And I love that. So if you're lonely today, I might not be able to fix it all, but could I invite you possibly into the body of Christ? Could I invite you into a community of believers? The Bible says that if we would confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, we would be saved. That we would go from a, a generation of loneliness and, and, and being condemned to the spirit of life that we'd be part of the body of believers, the body of Christ. And, and maybe today, the reason why you feel kind of distant even at church is because you haven't connected with God. Amen. I'm gonna offer this to you today. Maybe that's your first step, that you need to commit your life to Christ, that you need to commit your life to an eternity with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And here at Family Church, we don't make this weird. We're not gonna take you to a back room and try to brainwash you or anything like that. We wanna pray a prayer with you together to unlock that joy, to unlock that peace, to unlock that goodness that's already in you that maybe just the issues of life have kind of tried to stomp out. And here at Family Church, we pray this salvation prayer and it goes like this, dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the very first time and you're watching us online, would you type amen in one of our chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to connect with you and give you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. It is the starting point of your faith and what the next few days might look like. So like the first question you might have is, I don't feel any different. 
Welcome to the club. You're not going to, but we begin to work on this throughout our walk with the Lord. If you're in the room today, would you give me the honor of just celebrating you for two seconds? If you prayed that prayer for the first time today, would you just wave at me real quick so I can celebrate you? Anybody at all pray that today? Yeah, man! Anybody else? Real quick. I don't see anybody, we good? Awesome, awesome, awesome. There's a card on the seat pack in front of you. If you wanna fill that out, you can, and drop it off at the Welcome Center. We'd love to connect with you. We have that same starting point booklet at the Welcome Center. We also have a booklet there called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity. So maybe you came here today and you're like, yeah, I'm digging the flat iron beard and the, and the pineapple shirt, but I'm not so sure about this whole Jesus thing. That's okay. Like, Find out a faith for yourself. Like, do yourself a favor. Maybe, maybe we're right. It's worth investigating. Maybe we're wrong. It's worth investigating. We have a book there called Welcome Home. It talks about Christianity, what we believe here. Everything's free of charge. Just go grab it. it educate yourself as to what you believe your faith is moving forward. Amen? Father, we thank you for today. We pray that this word will never return to you void, but will accomplish exactly what you set it forth to do. Lord, I thank you for life change today. I thank you that we could be in your presence in worship today, that we could feel your spirit here today. As we leave here today, Lord, I bless everyone in the sound of my voice. They're the head and not the tail, above and never beneath. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Offering basket at the doors on the way out.